Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Commissioner, thanks for joining us. Let's uh, get you started with a big picture question. How about your thoughts on where the tour is right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, happy to be here. And yeah, I think we're in great, great shape. I think all of our metrics in 2022 were up. Obviously, most importantly, the, the purses grew from 70 million to 93 and a half million. You know, the player performance, the KPMG player performance uh, statistics are off the charts. There's tremendous young talent. Some of our veterans played phenomenally well. You know, sponsorships are up 30 percent. I'm sure you saw with the Sponsor United um, report that came out. And so I feel like we're in great shape. We we announced a phenomenal schedule for 2023, which we're excited about playing at some tremendous golf courses for you know over 101 million dollars, and I think still growing during the course of the year. Uh, tremendous interest in partnering with the LPGA. Again, the talent is just off the charts. I mean, we've been studying all the KPMG performance insights, and the data is quite remarkable. So we're feeling very bullish on where the tour is and and where we're going. All right. You've mentioned a number of things. Let's break it down piece by piece. Seems uh, with good reason, the players very concerned with the size of purses. You mentioned it this year. It was a record one hundred and one million dollars, which is obviously very, very good news. But the fact is, that's a fraction of what the men play for. What can you do to continue that upward trajectory? Yeah, I mean, we're we're focused on this every day and we have great partners who understand the value of you know, partnering with us and, and sort of the commercial value, but they also understand, you know, the problem that they're working on and helping us solve, getting more towards equity in women's sports and in women's golf. So I think a big part of it for us is really focusing focusing on our data, on our technology, you know, fan acquisition, uh, fan engagement, continuing to have the world get to know our athletes better and using technology and data and, and a really, you know, uh, an intense marketing strategy to get there because our players are so good mm. and so appealing and so we just need more of the world to to get to know them and to see their talent and to grow those numbers and and we'll get there but i think it's also just you know finding those great partners like we have more of what we have and more investment in the game so many great stories it was a terrific year how do you engage the audience most effectively what can you do as commissioner to help tell the story of the lpj tour after such a great season and hopefully you're looking forward to another one well, obviously, great partnership with you guys, and, and it's really important through the broadcast to tell those stories. But also, you know, it, we have to have two-way communications with our fan, content, 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 right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's the world today. It's not just their golf stories, but their stories off the golf course, the things they do for the community, their phil philanthropic work, you know, seeing the training that they put in, seeing the intensity of their performance behaviors. You know, I think it's just on us to really get them out there in the world to have people see this talent. I mean, I, I, again, when you study the data, you see that proximity to the hole for the women from various distances, you know, whether it's 50 to 100 yards, 100 to 125, 125 to 150, the women average on the LPGA Tour is, is slightly ahead of the PGA Tour. Wow. You know, the putting accuracy from various distances are pretty comparable, um, particularly at, you know, 5 to 10 feet. So we're slightly ahead. So, so again, telling that story, letting people see how talented our women are and what, how entertaining they are and how compelling they are as, as humans is really our job. And I think we've got some work to do with our technology and scoring data, you know, our website being more two-way communication. These are all things we're working on every day, but they do speak for themselves. The players are, as you know, quite remarkable. You mentioned new venues. This year, the uh, AIG Women's Open historically went to Mirfield. Next year, the U.S. Open, the Women's Open will be at Pebble Beach. We've already talked to a number of players very, very excited about that. Under the tour's jurisdiction, the Chevron is moving to Houston. Any other big moves afoot or places uh, you sort of have on your shopping list? Well, don't forget, we're also playing at, you know, Liberty National yeah, sure. this year, uh, which will be phenomenal. We're back at Wilshire, playing at Harding Park for the um, Hanwha uh, Life Plus International Crown. I mean, that's a I played there this year. That's a pretty remarkable uh, track. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's really important to have our, our women play at the very best golf courses in the world. And so that's high on our priority list. And, you know, KPMG is playing at Baltas Raw this year. Um, I mean, the list is pretty pretty remarkable as you go go down where we're playing. Um, all of our golf courses, obviously, going back to Pelican, 
where the match is, I think this weekend. And, you know, the, we're playing at great places and that matters. I think that really matters to have our fans and our audience see the women playing at the very best golf courses, the places where they've seen the men play for years. So we're, we're super focused on that. 11 first-time winners this year. That ties a record. Some great stories there, including the youth movement highlighted by Ataya Titicum. How do you think that impacts the game's appeal? Yeah, I mean, I think we're in this for the long haul, right? And and every week when you, you know, obviously I, I went to, I think, 29 or 28 of our tournaments this year, maybe even more. And, um, you know, you never know who's going to win. The talent is so deep across the whole the whole uh, leaderboard. So I think that just sparks interest and, and also from all over the world. I mean, I've been studying kind of where our top players come from, and it's it's remarkable. I think we've looked at who's qualified for the international crown, the eight the eight countries. And if you look, I mean, they're all amazing. Um, the four players from each of those eight countries, not including obviously, you know, Lydia and, and Brooke. And so it's really, really deep. I think it's really appealing to um, golfers to non golfers to hear their stories from coming from, like I said, all over the world. So the youth movement is real and they have just this tremendous sense of athleticism and this tremendous kind of mindset to get them to the top. I mean, as you said, Ataya, 19 years old, I've played in a couple of pro-ams with her and she is just unflappable. Um, and, and the talent's deep with Maya and, and Lynn and any number of other of the young players coming up. Maya, let me ask you about a little bit of choppy water in the midst of a very compelling event. Terry Duffy of CMA publicly expressing his displeasure with attendance at a corporate event. We've had some time now for the, des uh, the dust, I should say, to settle. What happened and how did that message land with your membership? Yeah, I mean, listen, Terry has been unbelievable. If you think about the CME, um, the CME Group Tour Championship, it is the culmination of our of our season. You know, the race to the CME Globe throughout the course of the season has really been a game changer in every way. And Terry's support is just off the off the charts. I mean, literally single handedly, um, you know, ch changed the the trajectory of the the tour. Um, and the week was fantastic on so many different levels. Obviously, crowned a phenomenal champion in Lydia. Um, you know, obviously she took in the Rolex player of the year, won the Vare trophy, um, won the points list, the money, you know, but it was also a great competition on Sunday. So, and our partners were all there and, you know, so it's, it's certainly not a matter of our players not being committed to our sponsors. That's been a part of, as you know, part of our DNA for 71, oh, yeah. 72 years. That's what we're known for. That's our competitive advantage. Our players are 100% committed to that. That This incident was not a matter of the players not being grateful and being you know, dug in on that. I think we had an organizational you know, lack of communication and uh, a little bit of a misunderstanding of the nuance of this one particular event. But you know, this, this was certainly not um, you know, our players not caring about the tour and our sponsors. I mean, they are unbelievable. You, you know this. I mean, look at someone like Lexi Thompson, who goes every week to the pro-am parties um, when she doesn't even have to. She's signing autographs after every single round, good or bad. And all of our, our players are like this. So it was embarrassing. It was an organizational mistake. We've we've obviously diagnosed it a million times to figure out what, what happened. But you know, I just want to reiterate our, our players are 100 percent committed to our to our partners to, to obviously Terry. I mean, he's been unbelievable in CME. So we're, you know, won't happen again. I, I own it as the leader of the organization, but as you said, a little choppy waters there uh, that was not not representative of who, who we are at all. All right, let me get you out of here on this one. How about you blue sky it for me? One big thing that's on your wish list, and it doesn't necessarily have to be realistic, but one thing that you would love to do as commissioner, wave your wand and make it happen, that would be a game changer. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there, there are so many things, but I think, again, when you always try to chop down a problem into smaller bites. And, you know, I'd like to see sooner rather than later at a very base minimum, you know, the, the hundredth best player in the world able to make a, a living that's really commensurate with, with her extreme best in class talent. So right now, you know, the hundredth best player last year made uh, just a little more than what she probably paid to be out there on the tour. I think at the top, as you know, we're absolutely, you know, we're, we're crushing it on so many levels. We had um, so many more players make over a million dollars this year. I think 25 players make over a million dollars where last year might have been 11. Um, so we're, we're doing quite well, obviously still want to grow that. But I really want the hundredth best player in the world to make a living that's commensurate with their talent and a lot, lot closer to what the hundredth best player on the PGA tour makes. So, 
you know, that's where we're we're really zoned in on. And, and then we want the 125th and then the 150th. You know, we we've got work to do there and, and we're we're super focused on it. A lot of great stories out there on the LPGA Tour, and I know you're looking forward to another great season. So are we. Molly Marcus, Simon, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great holiday. All right. Thanks very much, Ian.